Hello! Martin here. Um, this video I've been uh, learning a song called Feeling Good, which you probably all know, um, for a little duo I've got going with a, a very good lady singer called Christina and the duo is called Senor Tina. Uh, anyway, so I thought it might be quite a nice subject for a video, a little tutorial video which can span from sort of beginners to sort of intermediate and I suppose it does go advanced because we're going to be looking at the Muse version and Muse is nothing if not advanced. Um, so I thought we might be able to cover a few different sort of skill levels, hopefully get something to play for any for any level um, and, and hopefully some, some little bit of information might uh, come out for you. It uh, doesn't really matter where you are on the guitar. So we'll go through four different ways of playing this from, you know, easy to more advanced and see uh, how we get on. Hopefully you'll find something in this to, to take away. So I thought I might just uh, play a little bit of the song just to remind you uh, what it sounds like. I'm sure we all know this. It was a, uh, it's a basically like a jazz standard that uh, Muse jazzed, uh, you know, rocked up I should say. And it goes the begin the the uh, they're just going to play the sort of beginning section here. This is a lovely D thirteenth chord. Some G minor. So we'll stop there, and it does obviously go mental with the band there, but the chords are all there in that first little section. Um, and whilst the uh, actual the, the actual uh, chords there sounds like they're played on an electric piano with a bit of overdrive on it, so it makes it a little bit more tricky to play on the guitar. Obviously, what we're going to do is try and work out a guitar part that uh approximates what they're doing there as and as I say there are a few different ways of playing it. So it's in G minor. We might move to A minor for the easier parts because it's easier. Alright, but this song is actually in G minor. It has that uh, G minor chord in the top there, which is basically a D minor shape moved up to G. So to be playing that with your fingers basically to get all notes at the same time if you try and do it with a plectrum. Uh, here we are. You can't really you kind of lose the subtlety of it so you need to be doing so this don't don't worry this is the advanced bit I'm going to start with just to show just to sort of say what's actually going on on the record and then we'll show you how to sort of simplify that down if necessary okay put the bass in. Now this is quite tricky and I probably will fluff it up because I haven't practiced it enough but hopefully you'll get the idea of how it goes. You've got to try and do the descending bass line while still doing that chord part. So decided to do it um, to make things even harder was to do the stretch Basic advanced, the more advanced way of doing it. So we probably will come back to that later. Based around that uh, G minor up here. However, you can play it in a much more simple fashion, just with chords. So we're going to actually do, do this in um, 
A minor because it's a bit easier. And in terms of keys, you don't need to worry if you have to go from G to A. If you're playing, if you're working with a singer, they're probably going to tell you what key you need to play in, within reason. So I wouldn't play this in F. It's quite difficult, but A and G. And you might be able to use a capo to move it up a little, a couple of steps more. So you can move it, shuffle it around, you know, a step or two each direction to try and suit your singer. Um, Matt Bellamy obviously is a brilliant singer, so he could he kind of has a massive range. So he's playing it in G minor. Um, if it's a female singer, they might want to move it up a little bit, and a male singer might want to move it down a little bit. So in which case, you might need to detune the guitar maybe a step. But I always find, uh, as a, a complete aside, that um, E flat is a more sensible tuning for a male voice than E. Uh, that one semitone actually does make quite a lot of difference. It makes it a bit easier f all through the range, and obviously it means you can get a little bit higher uh, if you have to, or it makes the high notes a bit easier. So um, that's a, yeah, you can move tunes around a little bit depending on uh, the singer that you're working with. So I certainly couldn't even sing this in G. I'd probably want, certainly want to play this in G minor on an E flat. Uh, tuned guitar. But anyway, we're going to do this in uh, A minor as if it were, were maybe a female singer. So the basic chords basic root chords that if you want to do to sort of strum that's the easiest way of playing it okay so um, you got if you think about the uh, root notes of the chords they got you can play, you know, hopefully. Um, so that's that. So, hopefully that's part one sorted. If that's uh, your bag, go just repeat what I've done there a couple of times and uh, you hopefully should be um, up to speed on what I'm on about and then just practice it. So, level number two. The chords aren't really A, G, that's the bass line. The actual chord is A minor all the way through. Well, it's actually, as I say, it's G minor on the record. We're going to stick with A minor for now. We are going to switch to G minor when we get a bit more advanced, but A is easy to play. So what you want to be doing for this is A minor all the way through, but you're changing the root note of the chord to match the other chords that we've just played, so A, G, F, and E. Now, that's called, a, well, it's called a slash chord, so it's A minor slash 
So it's A minor with A in the root, A minor slash G, A minor slash F, so you play the F, A minor slash E. You could do it play E there if you wanted to. So uh, even though my fingers are moving around a little bit, the top part of the chord, that's, which is that's staying the same all the way through, and uh, you just change the bass. So A minor, A minor stroke G, so it starts on G bass. straight away that in particular in A minor stroke E is actually sort of augmented sounding um, sustain sus4 sounding quite a nice chord and all you've done is just played an A minor with an E in the bass that's why it's really important if you do an A minor normally not to play the E because it makes it a completely different chord so, so again I have seen it said oh you just play all six strings for A because it is in the chord. Now that is true, but it, then it makes it ambiguous about what's the root note. So if you play E, with, uh, if you play A minor with an E in the bass, or even A major with an E in the bass, you know that's a different chord. You, you've got to, you've got to normally when you play an A, you, you know you somehow mute the uh, the E chord, the E note, the, the E, the bottom E string, I should say, and just play A with an A in the. The best way of doing that is make sure you sort of thumb rest on the bottom E so it's not ringing out, and just be careful with your right hand not to play the E um, string very much. If you start putting the E in the bass, it gives you this, which is a lovely chord, but it's not what you want if you just want an E minor. Okay, sorry for the digression, but that's really important. No E bass when you play a normal uh, A chord. So to get back to the song. It's A minor, A minor stroke G, A minor stroke F, A minor stroke E. And then, you know the chords, your left hand knows what it's doing. So yeah, you reach over for the G, you have to complete your re rearranging for the F. And then just lift it off for the E. So again, if that makes sense, good. If it doesn't, just rewind that bit of the video, just try and see what I'm doing with the, with the hands. Um, and uh, if it still doesn't make sense, you probably need an actual lesson. <laughs> Advert there, by the way, which I do offer. Um, and so once you've got those chords, it's all to do with the right hand to get the rhythm. So I would do some... come back to in all of these videos the importance of separating out the bass and the rest of the chord. I don't think there's any more important technique for making your guitar playing interesting than being able to do that and this is a prime example of why okay so you can tell that we started off with a very basic root notes root chords I should say out the bass line and then you can do whatever you like um, with the rest of the chord you don't actually have to have the whole chord matching the bass line so we're doing uh, a minor stroke G very nice and then the, and so then the other way of doing it is um, well so I was doing the bass fast and stabs on the chord so 
I'd usually use the plectrum on the bass and then the fingers for the rest of the chord. If I'm doing it the other way around, if I'm doing fast chords and slow bass line, because I'm actually needing three. I'm not really not that good with my pinky when I'm picking like this. So I'll get rid of the plectrum and then you've got thumb and three fingers available. You know, if that makes sense. So that is the beginnings of doing it properly when you're separating, separating out the bass line. And it's just A minor all the way through at the top. Okay, now having said A minor, What I just did there was I moved the E string down to D. So we've got a D on there, and a D on there, and we're going to actually start playing it in G minor now. So that was section two with the, with the A minor stroke G stroke F stroke E chords. This is sort of section three, the third way of doing it, um, which is the hardest way. And then the fourth way would be sort I'll try and suggest what I would sort of suggest as a as a more practical way of actually playing it live because as you'll see there's some difficulties trying to reproduce exactly what they do on the record because it actually is a keyboard part uh, on the riff, the main riff that we're doing here. And now we're going to do it in G minor, okay? So that's G minor. So now the uh, bottom string is now tuned to D you would normally play a G on the 3rd fret, but now I'm going to have to play on the 5th fret because everything has to shift up 2 frets because the string itself is lower. So we will, uh, we will be, that, it'll look confusing, but that's the reason. So that's sort of how I play it. In the full G minor bar, it looks like this when you've got drop D. Uh, out of interest, there is quite a nice chord right at the beginning here, which I'll... Uh, teaches what I think, well, what I can, again, you cannot play this chord on the guitar, there's far too many notes, it's on a, it's on a piano, it just goes, uh, so you just have to compromise on the guitar, you can't play. The, th the, the advantage of a keyboard is you can just go, Wah, you've got ten notes, or even, if not even more, you know, if you press two with one finger, you can do these note clusters on a keyboard which you cannot do on a guitar. You have, to, essentially, you have to have certain gaps between the notes on a guitar, because you, you just simply cannot get uh, the clusters of the notes together, which is just easy on a piano, you know, you can't hear that, but um, you can cluster loads of notes together, which you can't do. So on this one, it's quite, an, it's a beautiful chord, actually, I think it's a D13, according to the music. Listen to that. Let's hear that again. <laughs> and you can hear there's a little bit of overdrive on that, so they've got a, a and tremolo, so they've got a lovely uh, piano sound going. So this, So that's a way of getting another note in there. So <laughs> just do that forever. Again, you can look D13 up. That's what I think it is. So uh, well, there you go. <laughs> that's quite a cool chord. And so it's D because we've got the D in the bass now. So D tuned the. The uh, bass, the E string, and so that's one of many reasons why you want the D and the bass, so you can do that opening chord. Right, let's have a listen to this. Right, so that is. As far as I can tell with my ears, that is what it is. It's that little three triad. And as I said before, that is the same as D minor shape. And so you got your finger on the uh, D minor shape played up five frets. So you got your finger on the, the G there, and then you play your minor chord. You might hear people talk about the cage system, which sounds more complicated than it is. It just means that you know all your root chords. E, e, yeah, I've got the D in the bass, but E, G, A, C, 
D, mainly of all your minor versions. And then you can move them up and down the fretboard uh, as you like, you know. So here we've got a D minor shape at the G. And then we've got to introduce that descending bass line. So, I did fluff it up before, this isn't easy and I haven't practiced as much, so, so you, this is the kind of thing where you need to do it like a hundred times, watching the tale. I often say, you're watching Apocalypse Now, if you just do this, by the time you get to the end of the film, it'll be absolutely ingrained in there, you won't ever have to even think about it anymore. So I'm thinking about this loads when I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do, where do my fingers go, and I'll probably still fluff it up, but that's not the point. The point isn't how good I can do it, the point is how good I can teach you to do it. So anyway, so it so starts off like this and the bass line is going to be so G, F, no sorry, G, G, F, E flat, D, first part first and then if we have time we'll go over the other chords. So. possible ways of doing it, they're both hard. One, in fact, one is pretty much impossible to do. So the trouble with doing the pinky is you're leaving, you're missing a note up there and it sounds a bit weird. try a stretch like that you're like that is impossible but you just force your fingers to you just force your fingers to do it just force them make them boss them around <laughs> so so essentially I might just show you a bit closer 
works today. Whoa. It's a bit awkward this position. <laughs> So, um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, it isn't easy, but Muse, it's Muse, for goodness sake, you know. Uh, I'll just touch on some, some other thing, that, uh, some other way. So, now, if you want to cheat, now everyone's got a loop, in, well, everyone's got a loop pedal, basically. If you haven't got one, go and get one, they are very useful. Some people, <coughs> I have heard people get a bit snobby about looping pedals, go, oh, well, it's really boring just to do the chords and then solo over the top. No, it isn't. What's boring is just to have one guy that you can't quite do the you know, lead and rhythm together, give him a break. Get, he's got a looping pedal, he can do a nice rhythm and a nice solo, he just can't do... Who can play... You know, who can play the blues and play a solo at the same time? Not many people. Still not as good as it would be if the, the proper thing was, you know, the proper rhythm was underneath. So yeah, that's a bit of a diversion, but there's nothing wrong with um, soloing over rhythm parts that you've got in a loop. It can be a lot more interesting than just playing by yourself. <coughs> having said that, if you can, having <laughs> having said that, if you can do it all in one go, that is more impressive. Uh, but it takes a lot more effort. So. What is a, what, so what is a cheats method of doing this? Watch this. sense. So all, obviously all I just recorded was that put it in the looper and then you don't have to stretch your fingers around because that bit is just going in the background. I'll just show you that again. in a second but what I'm going to do is I'll do one final video um, the way that I would probably play it live which isn't exactly that because it's too hard basically it's too easy to make a mistake and you don't need to make it that difficult for yourself okay it's hard enough as it is so coming up the proper way of doing it all right